Welcome back to our Friday night session here at our 34th men's conference. These things started in October of 1979, uh, and it has blessed it brought a lot of people in over the years that learned about deliverance learned about real deliverance learned about doctrines of demons and what how demons work inside of believers and because that's one of the problems in churches that you know years ago pastor really would say uh, beware of the day when deliverance becomes popular and you know in the pew sitters we we just laughed because you know we were you know everybody was allergic to us you know, the Pentecostals didn't like us, the Baptists didn't like us, so they, you know, everybody just left us alone. Our neighbors left us alone. You know, we'd have to tackle, you know, sometimes the ladies would manifest violently and the ladies couldn't hold them down, and out the door that demon goes, and we've got to tackle them five, six yards down in, in, people, in our neighbors' lawns, and those demons are screaming, don't take me back to I hate that place. And, you know, we got six guys holding it, you know, dragging that person back to church. and So everybody just left us alone. You know, they... they I probably watched this from a distance, but uh, so. But today, because deliverance, it's popular now. Even the Catholic Church has started an office uh, uh, in in the Vatican on exorcism. And uh, years ago, Michael Cunio wrote a book. Uh, Pastor John Gogan and I are are in that book on. Uh, he was he wanted to check out this phenomena called deliverance in America and the stories that he had. Uh, from Francis McNutt and, and Malachi Martin, you know, these people that say they did deliverance. So deliverance is popular today, but the Lord's not in it. The Lord's only in the things that he has ordained. And when we became born again, God didn't fix our old life. He said, that's done. And we, are, we were dead and our life you know, was now gone. And so he gave us a new one. And he said, old things have passed away. All things now are new for you. And you can start over. And he, gave, he made us to be born again in our spirit. Our body is going back to the ground. The soul, however the soul is going to work out, if the Lord changes it on the way up or just gives us a new one, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, and the way we react, the way we are now, that's not going to heaven. But our spirit is sealed until the day of redemption. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We're given the earnest of the Spirit, which was the down payment, Jesus Christ, the propitiation seat from the Old Testament. So you're, if you're born again, you're going to heaven, whether you like it or not. Because when we got saved, God gave us enough faith. He said we are saved by grace through faith. That faith is not of ourselves. That faith was a gift from God so that we wouldn't boast about it. So God gave us enough to get from hell to heaven. But in between that, he then told us to work out our salvation. And he gave us this really neat guideline, these, this, the Bible, and it's just small enough that we can, we can get to know it. We can, get it. we can have it to be intimate in our lives. It's not you know, a, a 25 novel thing, you know, because what's the last verse of the last chapter in John? It says that, that all the libraries in the world couldn't hold all the things that Jesus did. So he left us what we needed to know. And he's not interested in our opinions and our views. They didn't help us when we were lost. So he doesn't need them now. He's got a plan for us. And it's written in the Word of God. And what's happened over the years, you know, we're, I don't know where we are in the end times. I know some people think they do, and maybe they're right. I don't know. Most of the time, I guess almost all the time, they're wrong. But I know that we're somewhere down the road. So, you know, I think we're close to something in the end times. And the world that we're living in is a lot different than what it was just 150 years ago. You know, what, what did God do? Thank God for Christian psychology. <laughs> what did God do 150 years ago before these great minds came along and helped explain away sin and help people to get the burden of sin and unrighteousness that was manifesting in their life, I, you know, oh no, that's not what's going on. See, something happened, you know, in your parents' life, and, you know, so, you know, you've learned these things or you've picked these things up, 
And, and so sin starts to get explained away. And as I've said many times, you know, it was that long ago when the world heard about the church, it shook its fist, said, we hate you because the church convicted the world of sin. Now the same fist comes up today. The world hates the church even more because of our hypocrisy, because of our foolishness. And, you know, because of very smart people, I try not to. If I make a mistake, I'll, I'll apologize if I realize I do it. When I talk about, I don't mind mentioning people's names because they don't mind teaching these erroneous things that they do openly. And if they do it openly, then I think things can be corrected openly. I don't judge their care. Their, I don't know them. You know, I don't know them personally, so I don't judge their character. I don't judge the way, you know, I, I can't judge the way they dress or they look because be, I'm at the front of the line with those things. But I can judge righteous judgment, which is the doctrines that they teach. And the church has gone to sleep. Now, I, it's, just, it's just the truth that, that the church needs to wake up or those individuals that are in these dead organizations, these dead businesses, so and I know there's a lot of smaller churches that are okay, but the majority of the big churches out there are businesses. They have a budget. They have. They are no. They're they're almost like Frank Franken churches. You know, this was put here. This was put here, because so many things that the church is doing today is not in the Word of God. So when God gave us this new life, He didn't tell us to now go. He did tell us to go out and, and work out our salvation but through the word of God, not through how we feel about it, not through the neighborhood we grew up in, not through the parents we had in our lives, not through the schools we went to, but through the word of God, because God wants us all in the church, and we can laugh, okay? God wants us to be of one mind, one heart, one accord, one faith, and that faith is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And of course, all the churches today will tell you, what well, is Jesus Christ alone. No, it's not. They, they actually, so many of them, you know, there's a few evil people out there, I'm sure. But I think most of the pastors today were just trained and taught the wrong way. Merle Unger was one of those uh, concerning deliverance. So, you know, I, I try not to, I don't want to judge them uh, that they're evil people because I don't know them. But you know what? You, you can't be as smart as some of these people are. You hear some of these people on, on the radio and on the TV, man, I'm telling you, they can preach circles around me. They, they have great followings. They've written numerous books. They've got radio and TV. They are set up all over the world, and people love them, and they are so good teachers, and they don't know a thing about demons. They don't say a word about deliverance. And here, deliverance, this is a third of Jesus' ministry. And these signs shall follow them that believe, in Jesus' name, we cast out devils. And if you were to buttonhole a lot of the teachers today, they'll tell you 18 other ways that you can get demons out. That's the, that's the plan that God left for us. Or we can submit ourselves unto God and resist the devil and he'll flee. But deliverance works at, is in the middle of that. Other than that, there's no other way to get demons out of our lives if, if, we're, if we've been open to them. And we have all been open to these things. The devil has, has tricked us 25 ways to Sunday. We are, we are so deceived in, in how the church structure is set up. It's not in the word of God. You know this worship thing that's going on? You know how much, bo you know how much God hates a lot of the worship that's in churches? Today? Hypocrites and sinners and people who come to, because they're, they like going to church or they were raised to go to church or they go to church because they want to make sure their kids see that they're good people or whatever and they get involved in all these different things in churches and then they go home and they live like the devil or because they've got demons inside of them they're, they, these things freeze them from being able to work within the truth of God's word and so things get destroyed and then the kids, they look around. You know, these young kids in the, in the churches today, the, the youth groups, and, and you know that 92 or 93% of the youth ministry out there, when they get to the age of 21, they have nothing to do with the Lord. Do you know how much money the church pays 
for these youth groups? A lot of parents, they just drop off the youth, the children because they need a break. So the church will babysit them. One don't find this in the Word of God. Our children, to the best of our ability, should be in the church. They should sit in the church with us. It teaches them discipline. It teaches them that there are, there are rights and wrongs in their life. Well, they, they don't like it. Well, who's bigger? Do you know that it's good for your children to be in church? It, it's very important. So moving on with the message. Uh, we're told, in, uh, I'm going to go through a series of verses here that uh, um, if you want to write them down or you can get the message after, however, but Romans 8, 6, we're all familiar with a lot of these verses. Uh, scripture teaches us that to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Well, no gray area there. Amen? And I bet you the majority of the church can quote this verse, all the pastors, you know, the preachers that are out there can quote it. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And then they don't go any further with that. Or what they teach. You know, if you're angry, go to anger management. Okay? The church, there's a Christian version of anger management. It doesn't work. You, you can't counsel a demon out. Uh, those demons are well entrenched uh, in our lives by the time, you know, uh, a court rules that we need to go to uh, anger management or a lot of these other classes that are out there. People, a lot of people just go to these classes because the church is a social organization. God hates that. The church has tried to pattern itself. How, how do these other venues get people to come in to their places? Well, they advertise, they, they put on the lights, they, you know, they look, you know, they have the, you know, all the different fang, you know, newfangled things that are going on. So the church does that to get people to come in. But the Word of God teaches us that the Lord will bring people to us. And if He does, praise the Lord, and if He doesn't, praise, that's not up to us. And when we take that responsibility, when we, when we go out and try and do something that the Lord that it's the Lord's responsibility to do we get ourselves in big trouble to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so what's it mean to be carnally minded sports sports a lot of entertainment that's out there and listen I'm going to put myself at the front of the line all of us the reason the Lord gave us eternal life. The reason he saved us, once saved, always saved, is because we'd never be able to hold our salvation. We, with all the things that are going on in and around our lives, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Well, how many times does that, does that happen in our lives? A day. We'd never be able to remember to fess up uh, every transgression to the Lord, and so we'd slip away. So God... God knows how ignorant we are. He, he, that's, why, that's why he says these things that I'm talking about tonight, they're in the word of God because he comes into our lives because we're all different. We're all raised differently. We all think differently. You know, we all process things differently. Some of us are up and outers. Some people, others are, are down and outers. But we're all made in the image of God. And so God gave us a rule book that fits all of our lives. And when we apply that in our lives, we get victory over the adversary. We get victory over things that are in our lives that, that we've spent money, you know, we've taken vitamins, we, we've, you know, we've tried to change you know, the way we think by reading this book or that book. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Our life, our, we are now dead and our life is hid with Christ in God, Colossians chapter 3. We don't have a life anymore. We're, we're ambassadors from heaven. Okay? We're, we, are, uh, we are a foreign representative here on earth. We're from heaven now, and we're an ambassador here on earth to, you know, to have the light and life of Jesus Christ shine. That's our job. That's our responsibility. We're not of this world anymore. We were bought with a price, and that was the blood of Jesus Christ. So why do we, why do we try and be like the world? Why does the church 
embrace the world. Why? You know, Jesus said that if we, if we go to save our lives, we're going to lose it. Yet today, there's so many programs in the church because people are so burdened down with the problems that are coming into their children's lives, into their lives, into the marriages. Come on. Everybody's marriage. When does a marriage become challenged? When you say, I do. And the de- because it's, it's the best, neatest example that the Lord could show the world of how his relationship is with us through Jesus Christ. It's through marriage. It's that important. And how today people just throw their marriages away. Oh, you know, that just didn't work out, so you know, I'm going to find somebody else. I talked to a guy one time. He, he, was, uh, he was in two marriages, two or three. Uh, the gal, she was a nice person, but she had five marriages. And uh, so I couldn't help myself. I didn't know him. I knew her. Uh, so I was at a place that he was at, and I, so I pulled him aside and you know, talking to him a little bit, and uh, and he wasn't even divorced. Okay, now he's dating. He's you know, whatever he's doing with this other gal, uh, and he's not even divorced from his his present wife. And so I said, well, you know, I said, how's how's all that going? Well, you know, I'm going to get a divorce, and uh, you're not divorced, you know. Well, I said, well, you know, I said, so, and you've had a couple marriages now. I, so, you know, maybe marriage isn't for you. You know, but in our lives, because we have this wonderful gift called volition, Romans 6.16, to whomsoever we give ourselves over servants to obey, whomsoever we give ourselves over servants to obey, his servants we become, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. God gave us a, an opportunity to choose right and wrong in our lives. And when we choose right from the word of God, it takes us out of this world system. Is there anybody here that, that, you know, we're just, man, we've gotta, we've got to watch a movie. We've gotta go and socialize. We, you know, we've gotta have something in our lives from the world to, I guess, you know, like a pill, you know, to take us through the day. You know, God hates all these things. He doesn't want us involved. And listen, I slip like everybody else does, but I don't want to. And when I do and I catch myself, I repent and I tell the Lord, listen, I, I really I don't want this in my life and I know I need to do better. Help me, Lord. See, these are the types of people, I'm sure you all do that too, but these are the types of people that the Lord says, amen. amen. But those who don't care, those who can get saved or go to church and then live the way they want with, with, you know, without any um, conviction, without anything in their lives, that's when I start to question. The problem today isn't loss of salvation. The problem today is salvation, period. The church is stuffed to the rafters uh, with unsaved people. In 1 Peter 2, verse 11, Peter writes, he says, Dearly beloved, I beg you, he says, as strangers, we're, we're strangers here on earth, uh, and, uh, and we're pilgrims from heaven. He says, abstain from fleshly lusts that war against our soul. See, now, when we're born again, you know, we're told over in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 that we are 100% body, we are 100% soul, and we are 100% spirit. We are, I guess, kind of a, like a trinity. We are three parts of one. And these are all separate in our lives. And within that, again, when, when we die or, you know, demons, how can a demon be inside of a Christian? You can't go in the same body as the Holy Spirit. Yeah, do you know, I've traveled the world, and John, I bet that's the only, it's the only excuse, it's the only argument that people can come up with that the reason a Christian can't have a demon is because it can't be in the same body as the Holy Spirit. Well, you're doctrinally incorrect. The demons are not in the spirit. You're, you're sealed until the day of redemption. The real you, your spirit, is taken care of. God sealed that off. Now he's telling us to die to the things that are in our flesh, and that's where the demons are. And it's amazing that these learned people, see, because I'm not a learned person, and it just bowls me over that this is so simple. This, this is 
elementary. Why does the church not see this truth about demons, about how they can work in our lives? Uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 4. Paul wrote to Timothy, he says, no man that warth, because of course, here we are, we're men, okay? We, we basically like the word war. You know, war, you know, we're good. We like that, you know, men are, we're competitors. That's why men dominate most sports because we, we like to compete and, and we war in a lot of things. We want to let, you know, in, in our human nature, which we still have, thank God our spiritual nature is taken care of, but the human nature that the Lord wants us to die to, it boasts all the time. In fact, the Apostle James says that we offend people all the time with this little tongue. In addition to the things, those are the things we say. In addition to the things we do. And of course, as men, now guys, maybe this never happened to you, but uh, for me a few times, uh, you know, I always wanted to make sure that I was uh, in front of the other person in front of me. You know, guys just, we're like that. You know, we just, we want to let other guys know that, hey, we're men. But do you know that in the Word of God, when we became born again, do you know that both uh, uh, men, of course, are men, but ladies are also now looked at as kings and priests. Now, they have a different function in their gender from the Word of God, but God's, God's table now is level for all of us. And he says, no, no man that warreth can entangle himself with the affairs of this life because we're trying to please the one who's chosen us to be a soldier. So here we are, we're running around, you know, as kids we made, you know, guns out of sticks and, you know, all this fun that we had. And so now we're in the real battle and, and we run out of the church and we've, we've got our, our weapon with the wrong ammunition or, you know, without, you know, firing pins or we wouldn't know what to do with the weapon if, you know, if a demon popped up in front of us. Do we, does the church even know how to address demons? And, and what about these demons that are out there? Do you know that it was, it was Shakespeare, I didn't read him, I just know some of these quotes. Shakespeare said that all the world is a stage. And maybe some have, uh, that wasn't uh, the uh, Rush uh, group. They didn't coin that. Uh, that was Shakespeare who did that. And the title of this message is, All the World is a Demonic Stage. Because what is going on today for us? Okay? We, we, are, we have a spirit. There's a spiritual world out there. There are uh, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness that's residing in heavenly places. And if, you've looked, if you look that up over in Ephesians chapter 6, these are, some of these are different classes of demons. Some of these are uh, demons that work in and through people. Uh, some of them are in the heavenlies. There's a designation just like our government here in the United States we have a government of how things work. Well, there also is one in Satan's kingdom. He has a government also. And these things are principalities and powers, and they go and they do his bidding. And there's an innumerable amount of these things. I think that sounds like a lot of them. And they hate us. Oh, yeah, but don't you know, Satan, he was, he was defanged you know, at Calvary. Yeah, kind of, but do you know what the word of God says this guy can do in our lives when we open ourselves up to him? Well, I just don't open my life to him. Come on. We, man, we couldn't walk a straight line with the Lord if the Lord had a gun to our heads. We're so fickle. We're so, we're so thin-skinned. You know, look at the emasculation today that's going on in men's lives. Through what? Through every venue that's out there, every magazine that's out there. You know, years ago it was. I remember counting like 84 women's magazines in a in a. It might have been a Walgreens or a CVS. You know, there were like eight for men. Man, there's got there's like 40 now for men, because Satan is tricking men. He's stealing our masculinity. 
The Lord wants us to be men. The Apostle Paul says, stand up and be a man. Being a man is a great thing. Man, I'm telling you, you know, I love my manhood. And not because it's better or worse than anything else. It's because what an awesome responsibility we have as men. I was a wuss when I came here. I, I, was, I was so nominal. I, just, I had nothing in my life. Uh, no school. I had, you know, a court martial out of the service. I was a drug dealer. I was a drug addict. That was, that was the best thing I could ever do in my life. And I got saved, and I saw what a real man was. And as I stayed in the church, I learned what the Word of God said about being a man. I watched a guy stand up for God. You know, we read about David. Oh, he was a man after God's own heart. And he was. Of course, you know, he, he, like us, he had a lot of issues in his life. But he, and so we quote them. We, we look at these characters in the Bible and go, wow, this is a great guy. Look at the Apostle Paul. Come on. There's not an apostle out there, that, you know, any other apostle that you can look at and go, man, Paul, what the things he went through for the church. Well, that's what the Lord is looking for to today. But many are cold and a few are frozen. Many are called and few are chosen. God can't use us. And then when God can't use us or doesn't use us, we'll cop attitudes, we'll leave churches, we'll accuse somebody else of, of that's why the problem is in our life. We won't take the responsibility that we're not willing to stand up and be a man. Well, don't tell me I'm not a man. You are genetically, okay? You are biologically a man. But in the Lord's eyes, if we're not trying to be that man, to be what the Word of God tells us what men should be doing and not doing, the Lord can't use us, and we become legends in our own mind. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, Luke 21, 19, this thing of the soul, the soul is, you know, again, our spirit is sealed until the day of redemption. John, 1 John 3, 9, if you want to talk to me after the service about it, you can. I'm sure you've read all the different explanations. I take 1 John 3, 9 at face value. Whosoever is born of God does not sin. And if you look at how John's wording of born of God, he's talking about somebody who's born again. It's in, it's in the gospel and it's, in, and it's in the epistles. So whosoever is born of God uh, um, uh, cannot sin because his seed, sperma, Holy Spirit, remains in him, neither can he sin because he's born of God. You're not going to lose your salvation. You can't, the real you, the one that, you know where the scripture teaches us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak? They must have had, Paul must have had me in thought, you know, when, or the Lord had me in thought when that was put into the Bible. Because we're all like that. Our spirit, we want to be super Christian, number one. Well, I'm telling you, we, we want to be involved in the things of the Lord, or at least I hope we do. I hope that's what you're here for today. You know, we, we want to we wanna be able to, does it bother anybody the things that people are saying about God? You know, in, in our daily prayer here, I've included in the prayer now that, uh, that we bind all the demons and whatever the devil's trying to do for when an unsaved person all the lies that are being said against our Savior, that bothers me. And God doesn't need a, he needs us to stick up for him, but only within the word of God. He doesn't need us to campaign for him. God doesn't need us to shine the word of God, dust it off. It'll do what it's supposed to do. If we're to water, we're to water. If we're to plant, we're to plant. If we're to be quiet, then we're to be quiet. Some of us, don't know how to close our mouth. We know a little bit of Bible, or maybe we've read the Bible, we've studied it a little bit, so we know we're all, we're all like Job's friends. You say, well, that's not me. Okay, uh, you know, you can go to sleep or, or whatever, but this affects all of us. These are the things that freeze the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, of course, a lot of people deliver, well, those are demons. No, it's our ignorance. It's our unwillingness to agree with the things that our Heavenly Father is saying is best for us. 
You know, I, I talked the other day about, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. And what happens there, and because the scripture, you know what the scripture says about that? It says, because if you don't discipline your children like that, you hate them. I remember Pastor Worley teaching that years ago. I thought, that's the most, that's the most insane thing I've ever heard you say. Because I didn't know it was in the word of God. Well, I just know a better way, God. I think if I do this and do this, and you know, I've learned that, you know, God's not interested in, he's interested in our obedience. That's the only thing that works for him. Uh, quickly, over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 22, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 21, 19, in our patience and our sustaining perseverance and steadfastness. Yeah, I read that and I'm just like, wow, Lord, I'm so far from that. I'd like to think I am. And if you, I, once I get out of the pulpit, I'll tell you how great I am, okay? But truth is, is that, you know, in our patience, in our sustaining perseverance and steadfastness, possess, own your soul. Own the way you think, the way you feel, the way you act, and the way you react. So many of us today are, we follow, we listen, our friends, you know, basically our friends are people that, um, you know, that have come into our lives, there's something in them that we like, there's, some, there's a connection that we make, uh, you know, we're not, we're not being exclusive from other believers, but there, we're closer to some people in our life naturally than other people, and that's because we've got, hopefully, a godly soul tie, but there's a lot of us that have a lot of ungodly soul ties. Because we like, we wanted to be like that instead of being, you know, today. Why does everybody need to have a title? Why does, you know, the churches say everybody's got to be a pastor? There's a ministry of this, that, and the other thing. Why can't we just be a brother? God's not looking for corporals and sergeants and staff sergeants and lieutenants and, and colonels. and He's looking for privates. He's looking for us who believe and trust in the first beatitude that we can be nothing and we can do nothing because we are nothing. And why? Well, hopefully I'll have time to get into that. Over in 1 Thessalonians, because if we don't possess our souls, guess who's going to? Period. And it won't be your wife. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 22. Paul writes, he says, abstain from all appearances of evil. I got, I got tickled one day. I thought, what, you know, what does that word evil mean? It means something that will bring a toils or annoyances, perils into our lives, both physically and, and um, uh, ethically. You know, it, the Word of God teaches us in the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, goodness, temperance, and meekness, how to have, you know, eth to have, you know, uh, eth ethical things in our lives. You know, maybe our parents taught us that, but, you know, maybe they didn't, or maybe we forgot. The Word of God teaches us these things. But it says, abstain from all appearances of evil. Uh, and, uh, and the very, Paul was praying for those at Thessalonica. He said, he's, and he's praying that the very God of peace sanctify us wholly. He says, and I pray, God, that your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord. That's why we're to work out our salvation. How many times has the, the Apostle Paul said he wants us to die to ourselves? He says, I die daily. I don't always die daily. I should. It's, it's a good goal to put in front of us. And because because when we do that, this is where we went, where we win a lot of the victories. So he wants to preserve us blameless. Because over in Proverbs 14, 15, it says, A true witness, a true witness delivers souls. The problem today is these demons are not in the spirit, they're in the flesh. They're they're all entangled in the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, and the way we react. And we don't even know ourselves 
sometimes because we've bought into so many of these different teachings. You know, thank God these psychiatrists and psych, uh, uh, psychologists are out there and spinning all these demonic webs in the church about why things are going on and said you know as the holy spirit's convicting us of sin you know we go to our pastor and say i got a problem he says here take a pill or he sends you to a counseling place you can't counsel demons out they've got to be cast off first off they got to be recognized how many people come up in the prayer line that i surmise they're probably not going to get any deliverance why because they want it as a quick fix God wants these things out of us to not come back. So, uh, so let me let me go to this direction, and we'll see what kind of time is left. So today, this is the best way I can explain it. And if you have a better way, you know, please let me know. This world that we're looking at is not. It's it's a facade. The things that are going on behind Hollywood, the things that are going on behind commerce money, you know, things that are going on behind politics, things that are going on behind all these things in the world system. You know, commercial after commercial will tell you that if you buy a certain toothpaste, it'll make your teeth whiter. Now, they're lying. Okay? It, it might make it a little bit, but they just want to sell the product. That's the truth of the matter. It has nothing to do with the product. And this world that we have in front of us that the Bible says we're not to be of anymore. Now, I'm not, listen, let me clarify. If you're in school and your school does sports, be involved in those things. Those things teach us character. Those things teach us how to, how to be with other people. But when, when we start to come into our own as men, then we hook onto the Lord and we allow the Lord to take all these other things out of our lives that hinder us. You know, I loved hockey, man. I watch more hockey than, and the Lord says, I, he said, son, I, do you think you read as much in my word as you do watching hockey? Well, no. no I gave it up. Because this was idolatry in my life. And here I am, you know, preaching and telling people, you know, what the word of God is saying. And, and God says, hey, you got that in your own life that's okay if we want to do something about it so so we're all like you are right now you're the audience okay this is the stage all the all the world's a, demo, a demonic stage why because satan is the god of this world you know jesus don't you care jesus you know i need to i need more money in my life i need to do this jesus you know this is wrong i need you to take care of this you know a lot of people treat jesus or the holy spirit like like an errand boy Go get me this, you know, go get me that. We're the servants. Okay? Jesus already did the things that he needed to do. And so, in our, in, we have this audience here. And as we look up onto the stage of the world, you all see the, basically the same things I do. You see Hollywood, you see commerce and banking, and, you know, you see all the fingle fangles that are in the world. But you probably have a little different, you know, hang on them. You might look at things that you, you know, you like this percentage better than that. You know, we all have these little things in our lives. But what we're looking at is not what's really there. We're being told certain things about the world that aren't true. And it, the, um, there's, a, there's a, a, a word called dialectical materialism. It's Hegel's uh, philosophy. It's, if you look it up in a good dictionary, dialectical materialism is the official doctrine of communism. Okay. And you take a thesis, you produce its antithesis, so you can then come into the middle with a synthesis, a new beginning, and that's how the world is run. And we've got a book, a little booklet that you really should read in the book room. Uh, it, it's, it's on an earthly level, it's on a political level, and it's called The Occult Technology of Power, The Secret Power the secret knowledge of power. And we're being told that, you know, we've got to do this for the economy over here, and, and we've got to do this to get control. You know, Congress will speak up. You know, our government has nothing to do with our money. Our, our, our Congress will never, ever, ever be able to do anything about our money because we gave it away. 
in the 16th Amendment. We gave it to private bankers. We, we don't own it anymore. We print it. We print when, when the Fed says society needs a billion dollars, the Treasury Department prints up a billion dollars, and the Fed comes and takes a dollar off the top and says, thank you for the paper and the ink and the labor. And then they take it and they put it into, uh, into us, and we pay the face value and the interest on it. That's money. And the Word of God, you know, Paul says if, that if we have food and raiment, we should be content. Who does that? Anybody here? Anybody content with just food and raiment? But that's, it's no, there's nothing wrong with having things as long as they don't have us. So in this world that's out there, we're all looking at this stage, and your theater, your, your little world, you're looking at it, and it's doing whatever it's doing. Mine's doing maybe something similar, but a little bit different. All of us, what we're seeing, what, what we, because we make our decisions, we, we formulate thoughts by things that are said in the media, things that we read in different places, and then we all come to an opinion that this is what's going on and this is what's going on, when a lot of that stuff isn't either going on or it doesn't matter. And then we have the story of Jesus uh, in Luke chapter 13 when uh, folks came to him and said, Hey, don't you care about society? Don't you care about the environment? Global warming? I, I mean, I mean uh, uh, temperature change or all these things? Don't you care about that, Jesus? Don't you care about the labor unions that are out there? Don't you care about what these things are doing to people's lives? And uh, because the uh, um, because God, because Pilate was mingling the blood of the Galileans. Now I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. So they they came to Jesus. And said, what are you going to do about that? And they said, Aren't you going to do anything about these people who are dying? He says, Well, unless you repent, you're going to die too. Wow. Now that's not quite the answer that I would be looking for. So he says, how about that tower at Siloam that fell? Don't you care about the families? Man, you know, now these kids don't have a dad anymore, and, and you know, their income is now low. We've got to sue. We've got to, we've got to do something to fix these wrongs that are out there. What are, you, what are you going to do about that, Jesus? And he said, except you repent, you too are going to perish. And it really gets it down to the things that are important. Because if we do what we can to fix our lives, if we do what we can to focus on what the Word of God is teaching us to do, and we're not influenced by the world, by our friends, we can have these friends, but we can't. I had a 30-year friend when I got saved. A good, a good friend taught me how to hunt, taught me how to fish. He was just a, a very big person in my life. And something happened, and the Lord showed me what the Word of God said, and I had to make a decision whether I was going to do what the Word said or I was going to stay with my friendship. And I had to cut that friendship. And to this day it hurts. But that's what the Word of God says. We have relationships in our lives that we shouldn't have. We have agreements. You know, we watch these things on TV. They're called programs. Okay? And then we have all these other programs that are out there because the devil is constantly trying to program us to buy into something to get us just far enough away from listening to the Holy Spirit. Because if we were to listen to the Holy Spirit, he'd tell all of us to get out of a lot of these things that are in the world. They're not good for us as Christians. Demons flourish in these areas. The, this, these things, these disagreements, because to whomsoever we give ourselves over servants to obey, his servants we are to whom we obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So we can say, well, you know what, God, I just, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, man, that's too tough for me. So God, being the gentleman that he is, well, actually Jesus and the Holy Spirit being the gentleman that he is, and okay. Now, Jesus doesn't leave us. The Holy Spirit doesn't leave us. just steps aside. 
because that's where the pride comes in. And men have a big problem with that pride because we want to let other men know that we're okay. And we all have that personality thing. That's not us. That's what we want people to think of us. Our temperament is who we really are. How we are behind a closed door. How we are when we're not around other people. Th those are the real people that we are. And this stage that's up there, you've got all these marionettes with these demons that are dancing around. And we've bought into that, you know, if you vote the Republicans in, they're going to change things. Wow. Now, if you're young, you can hold on to that. But if you're a little older, you're kidding me. Every single time you vote for that person who says, I'm going to make things better, it never gets better. These people are lying. They make oaths that they don't care about. I'm convinced that, uh, and I don't know who these people are. You know, the church today, deliverance people are so afraid of witchcraft. First off, witchcraft is a very broad statement. You know, if you really want to talk about witchcraft, it's, you know, about a, something that's going on, buttonhole and find out, you know, wh what it's applying, where it's coming from, because in general, the whole world is run by witchcraft. The whole world is run by the occult. It's secret and hidden. And all these meetings that they have for our benefit, so that you can lay your head on the pillow tonight knowing that they've got your back, you don't believe that, do you? You know, the, it didn't take long. I'm not a very smart person, but after just a few weeks after the president, uh, President Trump was talking about all this COVID stuff, I respect COVID. I, I think we need to be careful. I don't think the Bible teaches us to not be foolish about anything. But to buy into these lies, to buy, I mean, there's only so many stories like gas prices, you know, before COVID, the, uh, before Trump. Uh, the gas price, if you listen to the news, they give you a different story of why the gas prices are going up in a month. They give you 30 different opinions. Do you ever notice that? Because everything they're telling us is a lie. They want us to be ignorant and dumb to the things that are going on. They want us to buy into that they've got everything under control. This is Satan's world, but we're to live in it. The Word of God teaches us to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. So we have to, you know, we have to, how can we be harmless as doves? Because I get upset sometimes. You know, I, I, I'm working on my driving habits, you know, being from Chicago and, and, you know, those people down in Texas, they don't know how to drive, you know. People in Chicago know how to drive. We all drive, you know, if the person in front of you is doing 85, you do 85. You know, or you're going to get run over, and if people are moving around, you move with them. They don't do that down in Texas. So I get angry sometimes. I'm working on it, actually. Now, the Lord shows me. He said, he said, how's your patience, son? I'm like, wow, thanks a lot. Because I think I have patience sometimes. You know, to pastor here, you got to have patience. You know? But when I get out of my car, it, it's like it falls out the window. So the Lord convicts me of these things, and we have all these things that are going on in our life that we need the word of God for. We need, we need to know when Jesus looked at Satan, when Satan offered him up on the, on the mountaintop, what did he offer Jesus? All the kingdoms. He offered him Hollywood. Oh, man, to, to be in Hollywood. Wow, to have that, to have those people. Oh, these people are so puffed up. Their egos are so big, you couldn't, you couldn't get them through a garage door, their heads. They want to be worshipped. They're stars. Do some research on the word stars. They are stars. A lot of them are part of Satan's entourage. They're called stars. And they want to be worshipped. And I, some of them, not obviously all of them, but I think there's an element out there that these demons or Satan or whoever has come to and said, listen, you want to be famous? You want, you want people to just love you and we'll give you the talents? Even Denzel, when they asked him about uh, his movie Glory that he did, wow, how, how, how'd you do that? He says, well, I'm not that smart. He says, I get with the spirits. I've got the quote. Others have said they deal 
with spirits. Now, they don't think they're evil spirits, but somewhere, you know, somewhere behind the politicians, you know, somewhere behind a lot of things, maybe even behind Bill Gates, I don't know, you know, maybe even behind him, there are people, there are things that are creating things and then passing forward on how if you're a Democrat, they're going to tell you this. If you're a Republican, they're going to tell you this. If you're an Independent, they're going to tell you this. If you're, if you're a Pentecostal, you know, you're going to get this. If you're, and the devil's got, he knows, these demons know us all so well. They know, they know if they scratch us here and tap us here and pat us here, we'll dance. They know what we like. They know what we dislike. They're very good at what they do. And that's why we need deliverance. That's why we need spiritual warfare. That's why we need to be vigilant. That's why we need to make sure that we're doing what we can to, to put these things aside. Sports does not belong. It doesn't belong in the church. It can, in your home, that's between you and the Lord. I would, I would never make a judgment unless you ask me. You know, if you ask me, I'd tell you. But, you know, if you, if you do sport, you know, if, if, you, uh, if you're... Uh, um, if you like to drink alcohol, you're wrong. And I can say that from the pulpit, but in your home, you know, if you ever invite me over and you've got 25 alcohol, you know, booze bottles sitting around, I'll never say a word. I'll pray for you, but I'll never say a word. I won't judge you. The Word of God already judges this. Now, if you were to come up and say, you know, Pastor, I'm having a little problem, and I, I might bring up those 25 bottles that could be a problem in your life. You know, it's wrong to smoke pot. It's wrong to commit adultery. It's wrong, it's wrong to have bad morals. The Word of God is teaching us, all of us, even though we're all different, intrinsically, now that we're born again, we're, we're the same. Unity of the faith, unity of the Spirit. And in order to go after that, we have to look at the Word of God and take all the, all the fluff and all the, all the distractions, you know, oh, did you know what this story is for? Why don't we just find out what that's for? Let, you know, there's a context in the Word of God that the Lord wants us to look at, find out why that verse is there, and then see if our lives line up to that. That's why, that's why uh, Paul said to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Because a lot of times when I do, I'll, I'll lie to you right now and tell you, yeah, of course I'm in the faith. But a lot of times, you know, my faith slips, truth be told. Well, maybe that doesn't happen to you, but, you know, since I'm the pastor, I need to admit those things. But when I catch them, I try and do something about them. But at least we can do something about them. We can bind and loose. We can break curses. We have ungodly soul ties with people that, that are keeping us in, in a frame of mind that the Holy Spirit can't touch. He won't go against our will. Uh, yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm done, but let me uh, real quick. I know in the control room, there, want to throw something at me. Over in, uh, I should remember this. This is, um, it's 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I believe. Here I am, look at my notes. Let me just turn to it in the Bible, you know. That might be better. Second Timothy two, I believe. Sorry, everybody. I should have had this one. I got it written down somewhere. And because uh, this, this is what, this, this is the nasty uh, of of what's going on uh, in our lives. And that is. I need to find this. In. Okay. Well, I can I can paraphrase it, but it's always better to quote it from the Word of God. Um, it tells us that. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse, let's look at 22 real quick. Uh, Paul writes, he says, Fle you know, flee youthful lusts. Sure, amen. Follow after righteousness, of course. 
follow after faith, obviously. Charity, peace, amen. I've got a bumper sticker that says that. Uh, and do that with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. And as believers, we have so many people out there that say, this is the type of person that I am. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. And we don't... I remember years ago, Pastor Early said, he said, it's not what a person says, it's what he believes. He said, it just takes a little bit of time to find out what people believe. Because who we are leaks out eventually. So instead of buying, you know, sight unseen in the Word of God, we're to test these things. But he says, he goes on, he says, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Now, if you love to argue, which never accomplishes anything, then that's okay, but... The Bible says, foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that all they do is gender strife. That's why I stopped arguing, because just, it just causes problems. He says, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all people, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, in meekness, because, fellas, this is where we're going to have a hard time. In meekness opposing in meekness instructing those talking to those that oppose themselves because just in case if God peradventure wants to give them repentance if when they start acknowledging the truth and so as real men of God you know instead of us taking the, the billy club or you know oh, let me just tell you you know we guys you know we talk and when we want to get a point across we use our voice and then somebody comes back and we raise our voice because we want to let you know that our opinion is better, it's more important than yours. And then they come back and, you know, pretty soon we're yelling. But the Word of God says that we need to be, uh, uh, we can't strive, we've got to be gentle unto everybody uh, because in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves and there is probably a very large element of people out there in the churches all over the place that are clueless. They say, this is what I believe, but they don't know what they believe. They oppose themselves. They say one thing, but their life says another. They do one thing, but something else is going on. You know, it's just a tragedy in the church today that, that when we get saved, we, we try and be something when we're nothing. When we try and, you know, we, we want people to look at us and, and man, God did. You know, we're, we're, we've been given the earnest of the Spirit. We, we've got a name that's above every name. That good work that He started in us, He's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We got everything. I mean, we, we have everything already. Just the kingdom of God is within. It's just waiting for us through truth, through us putting the right foot forward for that stuff to come out. And the demons are blocking a lot of that stuff. And there's just a lot of people. I, I used to be that way. I opposed. I would say one thing, but I was doing another thing. You know, there, there's, a, there's medical terms for those things. But for men, in meekness, instead of arguing with them or... You know, don't think, listen, I want to hit people upside the head with a billy club sometimes. You know, as the joke goes with, with Chuck Swindoll, somebody said, hey, he said, I love the pastor. He says, the people I have a hard time with. But they're all our people. It's all of us. I know it's a tough message, but this is it. You know, we're, we're way down the road in the end times. We've not helped God out in anything or our lives would be better society would be better we've been following the wrong thing there's nothing in the world God Jesus has nothing to do with this world system nothing when the devil said all these things I can give unto you because it was appointed unto me to do that and whosoever I want to I can give it to Jesus didn't say I rebuke you Jesus didn't say anything he knows and our lives, if, you, if we want a better life, if we want more victory, if we want... Because when the Holy Spirit does these things, 
You know, it's not rockets, red glare, bombs, bursts in air. We just change. Things just change in our lives. And a month later, we look back and go, wow, where'd that come from? Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. But we've got to be in agreement with him. He's never, ever going to be in agreement with us outside of the truth. If we want to be a certain way and do certain things and be around certain people, and, and I know it's tough. You know, Christianity is very simple, but it's not easy. So make sure that you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and sure appreciate everybody uh, not running out the door uh, on this message. So uh, this is the time of service that we're here to pray for people. Uh, we try to not just teach deliverance, but we want to do it also. Because uh, if you don't get the demon out, and these things, they, are, they know what they're doing. And if they can hide, if they can show, because if they can hide and show you, uh, they'll show you that they're not there. Because they're always tell. but once they manifest, they'll always manifest. But if you come up for deliverance, we'll do the best we can. Uh, to pr we'll give it a good roundabout, you know, uh, of, of trying to get those demons to manifest. And then uh, talk to you about other things, you know, that might apply to that. But uh, so if you're driven, harassed, and tormented, this is the time for deliverance. So if you would, let's go ahead and stand, and Brian's going to.